Good morning. And what a beautiful day to start off the month of October. Let's take a look at our upcoming events and activities. There is a lot going on. Let's begin up here. All month we are going to be collecting for our harvest home. So feel free to bring in some things. You can find the list on the back of your bulletin. And we want to add up to here, and that is going to be for the entire month. Let's get this place filled with food to help others in need. Speaking of which, on this side, we've got some boxes up here. Feel free to add to those as well. We are going to be contributing to immigrants. We always have our sock and underwear drive that comes up. Reverend Akers will be preaching here for the next two weeks. I'll be on vacation. We'll talk about that in a moment. He is going to be setting something up now for immigrants who would like to help out. So there is a list that has been sent out on your email. Please take a look at that. We'll have a list in the back next week that you can take a look at, things that they need. But this is going to be collected on the 15th. So we only have a couple of weeks to pull this off, and we've already got a lot of boxes up here. Please feel free. It's household items mostly is what we're looking for. And if you have any questions on that, please feel free to contact me. In your bulletins, oh, I'm well, looking at uh, upcoming events. Let's, let's start at the top. October 3rd, Dorcas class? Yep. Okay. Yep, here um, at 10.30. Okay. Christmas Bazaar Workshop, October 7th from 9 to 12. Reverend Akers, yes. Please. It's actually going to be the 8th on next Sunday, right after church. Okay. So Sunday after church. Yes. All right. So Sunday after church, Christmas Bazaar Workshop, 9 to 12. 9 to 12. No, after church. <laughs> can't be 9 to 12. Well, I'm not going to be here. Start whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Don't matter to me. All right. After church is probably fine. Bring your own lunch? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that part I got. Okay. <laughs> I'm just reading the notes. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Reverend Akers will be here on the 8th. Flea market on the 14th. Reverend Akers will be here on the 15th. Now, I'm going on vacation. This one, I'm heading out to Montana on Tuesday. I'm teaching a class in astrophotography out there for a couple of days, and then I'm flying down to... Colorado, Utah border, we'll rent a car and drive out into the wilderness in the Utah to the Mars Desert Research Station, which is where I go every year to maintain their telescopes. The Mars Desert Research Station is a tuna can on stilts for people trained to become astronauts on Mars. And I built two observatories for them out there that they can use for that purpose. One of them is a solar observatory, and a pretty good one. And we actually have a solar eclipse of the sun that's going right over the place. I mean, what are the odds you get that happening where you know you already have a big solar observatory? So they're going to be down there to watch this thing on October 14th. Now it's an annular eclipse, which means it won't completely cover the sun. There's no safe time to look at it. So in your bulletin today. I have provided you with some eclipse glasses. And something that has an incredibly small print on it, I'm trying to figure out why. But <laughs> if you want to write it down, it's Saturday, October 14th. And the eclipse starts at 12.05, where the moon will take a little bite out of the sun. And it will be over by 2.37. 1.30 is really the maximum for you here. It's going to be partial here. Eclipse viewers, you don't want to, you know, touch the uh, center on this. Perfectly safe. You can go outside afterwards and look at this, look at the sunlight, oh, look at that. You can see the size and the color that it will give you. Incredibly and perfectly safe for your eyes. Okay, this is a really good one. So hold that for the event. Visual only. Okay? You do not use this with a telescope. You do not use this with binoculars. Okay, don't do this and put binoculars here. That will burn a hole through that in a heartbeat. So you just look at it with the eyes through this. You're going to be in great shape. 
I've been looking at the sun since I was a teenager. I'm still seeing you out there, okay? This is a very safe way to do it. For you, at 130, there was a graphic. That's pretty much the maximum that the moon is going to slide by the sun here. For me, it's going to be directly in the center. We'll share pictures of that when I get back. So you're going to have a chunk taken out of the sun. You are not going to notice anything outside. If you didn't know an eclipse was going on, you'd be completely oblivious to it. Clouds will blot out the sun more than this will. So at 1.30, oh, it's still really bright out. You just take a look at this, and you'll see a little chunk taken out by the moon as it passes by the sun. So enjoy that. That's kind of a really neat kind of event to see. That's October 14th. I'll be back for the 22nd. We'll have our Bible study, 27th community dinner, and at 5.30. Always a lot of fun. Always a lot of fun in fellowship with that. Other things that need to be brought to our attention in the other events or activities. Marcia, please. Um, <clears throat> the Alperson Garden Club is having their annual flower show in Derrick Hall on Saturday, October 21st from 12 to 4. And the flower show is free, it's open to the public. It'll be kind of interesting. These people are really creative. They want ribbons at the Philadelphia Flower Show for their exhibits. So it's worthwhile to come see and it's free. In addition to that, we're going to have our kitchen open and we're going to be selling soup to go and bake goods. So, if you would like to pre-order some soup, there's a form in the back, um, and just give it to me or leave it in the kitchen. Um, this way we'll make sure we don't run out if you have a favorite soup that you would like. And also, if you could make any baked goods for the day, I have a sign-up sheet in the narthex, um, looking for things that, like cookies, cupcakes, brownies, things that people might eat as they're walking around or driving around, or things to take home and have goodies. So, any help would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> The young minister was being interviewed by a church board for the position of pastor. And one member on the board looked at the young man sternly and asked, Young man, did God send you here? The young pastor was taken aback for a moment and said, Well, I don't know if God sent me here. I'm here trying to find the will of God and find out if you would like me for your next pastor. Board member replied, young man, did God send you here? The young minister was, again, at a loss for words. I guess that was a good enough response. Um, and said, well, I, I just stopped by to talk with the board. And, <clears throat> young man, did God send you here? Well, I guess God didn't send me here. I just stopped by to see whether we could get along. Old board member leaned back in his seat and said, that's good. That's good. Because the last four that God had sent here, or said that God sent here, we had nothing but trouble with all four of them. You can take this story, it could be about our scripture today about a king of Judah by the name of Josiah. And when he became king, we're going to learn his story today. But right now, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Thank you. 
In the mighty arm of the Lord. And let us lift our voices in loving praise. Blessed, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord. Let us join our hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 436. Thank you. 
Let us draw near with a true heart, confessing our sins unto God our Father, so that we might be granted forgiveness. Let us pray. O oh God, so often we have allowed the fears of the world around us to overshadow the promise of your love and presence. And too often we have allowed ourselves to be frightened by people and events that hold no power over our eternity. Forgive us, Lord, and create of us living witnesses to your redeeming power and love. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Having received new life through the generosity and the love of God and the hope that Christ brings, one fact is reigns that does not change. God has loved you, loves you now, and will always love you. This is the good news that brings us new life. The Almighty and merciful God grant us pardon and remission of our sins and time for amendment of life and the grace and the comfort of this Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. lesson is from 2nd Chronicles chapter 34 verses 1 to 13. Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed the ways of his father David not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. In his twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Asherah poles and idols. Under his direction, the altars of the balls were torn down. He cut to pieces the incense altars that were above them and smashed the Asherah poles and the idols. These he broke to pieces and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars and so he purged Judah and Jerusalem. In the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali and the ruins around them, he tore down the altars and the Asherah poles and crushed the idols to power, to powder and cut to pieces all the incense altars throughout Israel. Then he went back to Jerusalem. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign, to purify the land and the temple, he sent Shaphan, son of Azalah, and Messiah, the ruler of the city, with Joah, son of Joaz, the recorder, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. They went to Hilkiah, the high priest, and gave him the money that had been brought into the temple, which the Levites, who were the gatekeepers, had collected from the people of Manasseh, Ephraim, and the entire remnant of Israel, and from all the people of Judah and Benjamin and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Then they entrusted it to the men appointed to supervise the work on the Lord's temple. 
These men paid the workers who repaired and restored the temple. They also gave money to the carpenters and builders to purchase dressed stone and timber for joists and beams for the buildings that the kings of Judah had allowed to fall into ruin. The, laborers, the workers labored faithfully. Over them to direct them were Jehot and Obadiah, Levites descended from Merari, and Zechariah and Meshulam, descendants from Kohath. The Levites, all who were skilled in playing musical instruments, had charge of the laborers and supervised all the workers from job to job. Some of the Levites were secretaries, scribes, and gatekeepers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for him, for him, 606, nearer my God to you.
let's get this out of the way right away. I always get asked two questions. Question one, what was it like to be the youngest ruler in all of Israel? Well, I wasn't. That's your answer. King Joash was the youngest. He started ruling Israel at age seven. My name is Josiah. I was the king at age eight. So he was the youngest, not me. And the second question I get asked all the time, when I first took the throne of Israel, did my feet touch the ground? Seriously? <laughs> Out of all the things I've done, that's what you want to know? I had no idea what people, it's a huge throne, people. I had to climb up into the thing, and no, no, my feet did not hit the ground, and had I known it was so important to know that, I would have told you the exact date that my feet did, but it was about 10 or 11, I could touch the ground with my tippy toes, something, I don't know. Can we move on to important things? I am King Josiah of the kingdom of Judah. I have served as the 16th king of Israel. My father is King Ammon. He served for only two years. Now that is not the least amount of time. There was one king who served for seven days, but that's a totally different story. My grandfather, King Manasseh, served for 55 years. That was the longest that any king in history has ever ruled Israel. And his father, my great-grandfather, if you're keeping track, King Hezekiah, boy, I saw some eyebrows go up. You've heard of Hezekiah? I didn't. My father and my, grand, my grandfather really didn't talk about great-granddad very much. They were oddly quiet about him. I learned about him much later, but he ruled, of course, before his son Manasseh. To understand my story, I need to give you a little back history here. Israel was struggling under some very, very difficult times. Way before my time, they had a civil war. They had difference of opinions and ideas, and instead of solving them and working together, they fought. And eventually, Israel was split into two kingdoms. I don't know exactly what the political problems were at the time or why they felt it was important enough to break apart. Many people would tell me, but none of them ever matched, so I'm not sure what's fact, what's fiction anymore. But I do know this. Whatever broke them apart made both of us weaker. When enemies came, it was so much harder. And especially the Assyrians. They were the worst. They took over the northern kingdom of Israel first. King Hezekiah was the king of Judah at the time. And we watched as they were decimated. Not only did they overtake the northern kingdom of Israel, they deported most of the people. Have you ever heard of the lost ten tribes of Israel? Have you heard of that? There you go. Ten of the twelve tribes were gone, and we have no clue what happened to them. Never heard from them again. Hezekiah certainly did not want this to happen to Judah, and we certainly were in no place to fight the Assyrians. So we bargained with the king. He gave him money, he gave him jewels, he gave him gold and silver. A lot. And where did he get this? It was Hezekiah. He didn't ask for the people for anything. He took it all from his palace. His palace was laid bare. And he gave the king of Assyria all those things so that they wouldn't attack. But the king of Assyria was not satisfied. He wanted more. He wanted a lot more. 
And Hezekiah very reluctantly had no choice, so he went and he stripped the temple. Solomon's temple of all the gold, all the silver, all the jewels. And he took all the money from the temple treasury and gave it all to the king of Assyria. He felt a little better about it, but he still wasn't satisfied. All of us were made subjects. But Hezekiah made it clear that we could still practice our culture, our religion. But we were still subjects. Are you familiar with... Um, the concept of taxes at all? It, you are, trust me, you have not seen taxes the way we had to pay taxes as subjects of Assyria. It was a difficult time. And it was about to get a lot worse. When Hezekiah passed, my grandfather, Manasseh, came the king of Judah. And he had a totally different idea. He decided... Look, we're conquered, let's just go with it. And he talked to the king of Assyria and he said, if we're going to be your subjects, let's be your subjects, let's be Assyrians. Let's practice your culture, let's practice your religion. And he made a decree that we were now going to be all worshipping Baal and the other pagan gods. Our culture was now gone. Part of the practice I found out later that it actually began here was the sacrifice of your firstborn. When he had his first son, Manasseh sacrificed him to one of their pagan gods. When he had his second son, my father, Amon, Amon is not a Hebrew name, it's an Assyrian name. We were part of the Assyrian Empire. Manasseh reigned for 55 years, the longest of any ruler in the kingdom of Judah and Israel. 55 years we were practicing Assyrian ways. I consider it to be the darkest time of our history. When Manasseh passed, my father, King Ammon, became the ruler of Judah. He had no great reforms. He was well with the Assyrian ways. He started at age 22. At age 24, he was murdered by one of his servants. And I came on the throne at age eight, an orphan. My feet don't touch the ground of the throne, right? I don't really have what it takes to rule a country at age eight. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have the experience. We all know this. What I need are people, people I can trust, people I can work with. And that's one of my first jobs is to pick advisors, tutors. And I had many people who wanted the job. I didn't like any of them. You know what? I have to say, if I could be proud for a moment, at age eight, I made a really wise decision. I picked somebody that I could trust. It was a temple priest by the name of Hilkiah. I don't know why, I just really liked him. And he got other temple priests and they taught me the ways of the God of Abraham, of Isaac and of Jacob, of Moses and of David and of Hezekiah. And I realized there is only one God and one God that is worthy of worship. As I started to learn my role and time had passed, after eight years, when I became 16 years old, I was ready. I was ready really to firmly rule. The Assyrians had backed down a bit. They weren't in our face all the time. They were dealing with the Chaldeans and the Babylonians. We didn't see them as much, and I made the move. Destroy every altar to Baal. We're done with it. From now on, we only worship the God of Abraham. I want all the poles that were taken down. I want all the incense that we set up for their gods. I want it all destroyed. And it was done. 
I had bigger plans. By age 18, I had finally collected enough money and had enough political clout to get money to rebuild the Temple of Solomon. Oh. I remember Hilkiah coming in and saying to me how proud he was and that renovations were starting to go on and that we would be able to worship God back in the temple. And he said, do you know what Josiah means? Do you know what your name means? I said, I don't know. And he said, healed by God. I like that. And Hilkiah said, there's more though. It's not just you that's being healed. You're also healing this nation. There was a lot in the renovations. The place was a mess. We had to replace wood, we had to replace stone. Of course, we had to add in the jewels and the gold and the silver. We wanted this thing back up to its former glory. And I will never forget the day. A priest comes in to me, holding a box, and the look and the face, the eyes are as wide as saucers, a grin like he was a little kid. Never seen such a thing before. And I looked at him and asked what was happening. He said, renovations are going splendidly in the temple. Everything is on schedule. Everything is looking good. But we found this. It's the book of law. We didn't have the book of law. I don't know when it disappeared. Probably during at the end of Hezekiah's time when my grandfather took control. We, we didn't know what God required of us. They found a copy that was hidden in the Temple of Solomon. It was uncovered during the renovations. It said, read me every single word. Don't skip anything. And I learned the stories of these books of Moses, the laws that God had given to Moses. Learn of the promises that God gives. I learned of the curses. And I realized we weren't fulfilling this. We were doomed. I cried. I I ripped my clothing and to spare. And I prayed for forgiveness. We needed to continue with the rebuilding of the temple. It's the best we could do. But first, we need to make changes. I told Hilkiah, tell everyone immediately, there will be no more child sacrifices. God does not want that. We've been doing it so long, we just thought that was normal. That has to stop right away. Tell the people we have found the book of law Tell them that we will be following God's rules from now on. We'll be letting them know what they are in the coming days. That was a rough time. I remember when the temple was when the temple was completed. What a celebration. Oh my gosh. Passover. We had it set for Passover. It was the biggest Passover ever. We slaughtered 2,600 lambs and goats, sacrificed them, 300 bulls. We had so many people. It was a logistical nightmare. We had so many people. It was a celebration like none other. We had singers. We had musicians. We had it all. It was amazing, but it wasn't a dedication of, of, of wood and stone and, 
and precious jewels and metal. It was more than that. It was a it was a recollection of the memories of yesteryear as we tried to regain our spiritual heritage. Honestly, what it really was, was a rededication of our lives to God. That's what it was. The God who creates and the God who, who restores. The God who sustains. In my life, I would have to say, if you could do anything, just make sure you have courage. The courage not to follow the crowd, but the courage to listen to God and to follow God's word. The courage to be right with God, no matter what is happening. That's the key. And the second part to that is to take action. We went into the temple on the Sabbath, but we're to be with God. We are to practice every single day of the week, not just on the Sabbath. We're to give our hearts to God always and to make that a part of it. It's like tending a garden. We have to water it. We have to nurture it. We have to weed it now and again. Get things out. That's what our spiritual life should be with God. That's the way our hearts stay clear. That's the way we can listen to God. Through that, and also through prayer and humility, that's the key. And asking forgiveness, which God will grant. I wish you all well. May you always worship the God Almighty with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, in all ways. It's such a joy to have Peter bring these characters to life, and he does it so well, and so meaningful is the message that he gets across. So let's give Peter a round of applause. <laughs> and an Oscar at some future date. <laughs> uh, for joys and concerns, um, we have our, our prayer list to keep people in the prayers, but um, Jim and Jean, it's good to see you here in person. I'm glad you're both on the mend. Uh, Nancy has been moved to a rehab facility on Friday night, Jim, you mentioned that. Uh, so please keep her uh, in your prayers. If you haven't had a chance to sign the card, Sharon has a card that we'll be sending to her. Um, it's always a joy at the change of a season to come to church and see how things have been transformed. So we went from summer to fall. And um, there's some special collections being exhibited on the windowsills. Uh, the Menos, which is a local, well, he was a local folk artist. Um, and a number of us collect some of his, his work. So we wanted to share it with all of you. It's a joy to see all the shelves already being filled the first week of Harvest Home. I have two other joys. <clears throat> One is yesterday, I was honored to be at a birthday party for my best friend's mother who turned 100. And I don't know about any of you, but it's the first time I met a 100-year-old. I've known her for a long time, and as she likes to say, She's outlived her parts. <laughs> her mind is still sharp as a tack. So, of course, everybody wants to know, what's the secret to living to be 100? And she shared two things with me. One is, be content with what you have. Growing up during the Depression, you learned to live with what you have. And all her life, 
she learned to live with what was around her. The second thing is um, she has a plaque that says, be grateful, be thankful, and blessed. And she looks at that every morning and she said, I am. I'm so grateful, thankful, and blessed that I'm here today. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so may we all live to be 100, which would be wonderful. <laughs> Uh, the second joy is a year ago on September 11th, Peter was installed as our lay minister. And we didn't forget about you, Peter. <laughs> In fact, at a fellowship um, after church today, we have a little cake to celebrate. And um, we also have a card for you. So thank you. For everything, it says it in the card, but I mean, you are such a huge part of this church, and we cannot thank you enough. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I guess, uh, did you talk about the shed dedication? No. We're going to have a shed dedication. <laughs> that shed is looking nice down there. And we need to dedicate it as a shed before I turn it into a garage for my Jeep. All right? So, uh, I'm thinking that's really where we're going with this. But uh, it might even be in the car. I don't know. Um, yeah, so we will have that when I get back. Um, when are we going to be done with this thing that we can have this? <laughs> we're looking at the end of the month? Certainly? Oh, okay. yeah. By the time I get back in a couple of weeks, we can have it at the end of October. Okay, we'll look into that. And just one other joy that I would like to share is uh, my nephew, Matthew, is moving out of the house today. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, this is, this, is, this is huge. I was helping them get the moving truck set yesterday, and today is the big day they're moving, and I said, oh, darn, I can't help you move that sofa up two flights of steps or whatever it is. I got to preach today, so thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, no, it, it's uh, it's a wonderful time for him in his first uh, apartment. He's got roommates. He's uh, gonna be living down near Coventry Mall, whatever that Coventry Manor. I don't know. I haven't been there yet. But um, <laughs> sorry, about that. I'll get an address eventually. That, that's really great. Um, and also to add on to our prayer list. I would like to put uh, Fred and Joyce uh, wait on to the prayer list. So please keep them in your prayers always with thanks. Anything else? Okay. I think we're up for our prayer then. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray that our faith be enriched and energized daily by prayerful contact. We ask that you guide us through the mysteries of life, seeking to find your word and to do your will in our daily tasks. We recognize the need for changes in our systems, shifts in our outlooks, for the renovation of the spirit, for the restructuring of our priorities. Help us to start where we are and to be realistic with our goals and ideals, to have a solid foundation of faith from which we can do your works. Help us to find the energy and fortitude to strive to be all that we can, so we can sacrifice those things that no longer serve us, to make sacrifices of our time and energy to help others. Allow us to achieve this balance and in the process Allow us to make space in our hearts, in our minds, and our souls for you. Guide us to use these tools to help serve the world. We ask your special blessing on those who are ill, those who are recovering. We ask your divine grace to find peace, wholeness, and joy that comes from sharing the kind of love you extend to us. Enable us to reach out in fellowship to others with the grace of the Holy Spirit. We lift our hearts to you, O Lord, quiet 
and open with reverence and awe as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The land is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. time the ushers wait upon you for the gifts of our morning offering. Let 
during our celebration of Holy Communion, they will be using the green laminated sheet found in the bulletin, or in your hymnal. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Eternal God, who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your own image, for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim on us, and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all the people in every generation who have given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. Therefore, the entire company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God most holy. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Let us gather about Christ's table. Please be seated. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread having blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after he had supped, gave it to his disciples, saying, this is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. We 
we have just come forward at this time. body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat. <clears throat> Amen. blood of Christ which is shed for you. Take and drink.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have made us one in the body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. Now send us forth to be your people in the world. Grant us strength to persevere and resist the evil and to follow the Christ's example in our service to others. Amen. Please rise and let us join in our hymn 543, where across the crowded waves of life. Make room at your table for unexpected guests, and may the blessings of God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit go with you today and always. Amen.